This is Adam Scott Want, professor and technologist from John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and this podcast is to help people who are about to sell their phone. What we will cover is how to securely erase an iPhone before you sell it, because there's a lot of information on your iPhone, and whether you're selling it to somebody you know or an online website, you want to make sure you get rid of all that information as securely as possible before you do so. By the way, these methods work on Android as well, although all of the screenshots and capture will be from iOS. While no method could absolutely guarantee that your precious moments and other private information cannot one day be recovered from a wiped phone, this method is derived from best industry practices and will do a fairly good job at assuring that your wiped data stays wiped. Before we start, here's a sneak peek at the 10-step process we will use to securely wipe our information from the phone. You could also find this information down below in the description section. All right, so the first step is to make sure that you back up all the information on your phone that you want to keep. Maybe it's backed up to the cloud, maybe it's backed up to your computer, maybe it's already on your new phone. But remember, we're about to lose all the information on this phone and it's not going to be able to be recovered. Also, make sure your phone is plugged into the wall via a cable. You don't want your phone going dead on you during this process. Next, we want to sign out of all system services. This is especially true if we use Find My iPhone or iCloud. We go to Settings, and then we're going to scroll down in iOS until we find iCloud. And we want to click on iCloud. Then if we scroll to the bottom, we could see Delete Account and you want to click delete account and delete from my iPhone. Now I'm going to cover up my password so you can't see my password. After it confirms our password, it turns off, find my iPhone, and logs out of iCloud, which is what we want. I'm also going to go to the iTunes and App Store and sign out of that as well. Now, the third step is to erase and factory reset your phone. You could do this in Android or iOS, does not make a difference, but I'm going to go over and show you how to do it in iOS. We start off under Settings, the gear icon, and then we go down to General, and then we scroll down to the bottom of General where we will see Reset, and we select Reset. We want the second option, Erase All Content and Settings. And when we select that second option, we enter our passcode. And when our password is verified, it asks us, this will delete all media and data and reset all settings. And then you hit the yes for Erase iPhone. It then comes up and reconfirms that you want to completely erase your iPhone. It warns you it cannot be redone and you select Erase iPhone and it brings you to this white screen as the phone resets. Well, now that we wiped our phone, believe it or not, the next step is to set the phone back up using as many skip functions as possible. Basically what we want to do is get to the user interface, but get there without putting in any of our personal information or at least the minimal amount of personal information possible to get to the user interface. Again, this guide is based on the iPhone, but if you just substitute the options in Android, this method will work for you too. So the first step is just sliding the bar to set up and getting into the menu. Select English or the language of your preference. Select the country or region that you're in. Choose a Wi-Fi network or if possible, set up using the cellular connection, which is what I will choose. I don't want to put any Wi-Fi information in here, so I'll just choose cellular connection. At this point, the phone goes through an activation sequence to activate. Once done with the activation sequence, it's going to ask me if I want to enable location services, and in this case, I definitely do not. So I will select disable location services. I'm going to set it up as a new iPhone. I don't want to import any of my old data or restore it from anywhere. So set up as a new iPhone. I am going to skip the step of signing in with my Apple ID. I do not want to sign in with the Apple ID, so I'm going to select skip this step. I'm going to accept the terms and conditions. I am going to skip the Touch ID setup because I don't need it, so I'll just select setup later. Create a simple passcode, doesn't make a difference. Don't send diagnostics. 
now that we've set up our phone, now that we're back into the user interface, the next step is to go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download a free application called Wicker. W-I-C-K-R. Wicker. You'll be able to find it for free on both the Google Play and the Apple App Store. It contains an excellent free file shredder, which we're going to use in this process. So go to the App Store and go to search on the bottom row, the magnifying glass, and type in Wicker, W-I-C-K-R. It will come up, double click it to install. You'll have to enter your Apple ID. Once we enter our Apple ID, it will start to download the Wicker application. Once Wicker downloads, we can click into it to open, and Wicker will ask if we want to send push notifications, but we don't need to do that for right now. And we're going to want to create a new account, whether or not we use Wicker. So we're going to create just a generic Wicker account. It doesn't matter what the user ID is, just remember the user ID and password. You shouldn't have to re-enter it, however, once you establish it for the first time. So I'm just going to put in 12345QWERTY. Again, you don't need a strong password, a strong username, because you're only going to be using this account once. And it's to get access to a feature of Wicker, not to the communication program itself. So I'm going to put in this information and hit Next. And I get a registration error that my username must be between 4 and 15 characters. So I'll just shave a couple characters off. That should be fine. And now I'll hit Next. It's now registering and setting up an account. I hit Next. I don't want to add any ID connections. We will hit Do Not Allow because Wicker does not need access to our contacts. We're going to hit Next in the Friend Finder and not turn it on because all we're looking for is this screen, which is the main Wicker home screen. Step six is to run the secure file shredder in Wicker. Wicker has a file shredder that wipes all non-allocated and basically unused space. And since the only thing on our iPhone right now is the operating system, we will be using Wicker's secure file shredder to wipe all the other space on the phone. A relatively reliable way to make sure that the majority of your personal information is wiped before you get rid of your phone. From the main Wicker screen, we want to go to settings on the bottom right hand side and look for the secure shredder option and click on the secure shredder option. Now none of these settings make a difference because we're doing a manual shred, so all we need to do is find and hit the start button to start the shredding process. You should put the phone down before hitting start because once you hit start you're not going to be able to touch your phone for about 10 to 20 minutes depending on the size of your phone. I am going to speed it up in the video so that you don't have to wait 20 minutes while my phone wipes. You'll get the general idea from this Right at the end of the process, you will get a message that says storage almost full. This is okay. You want to hit done. This is a normal message and it displays almost every time you run the secure file shredder. It will finish by cleaning up and then announce that the cleaning is complete. From this point, you could hit okay because you are done with Wicker and the secure file shredder. Some people will advocate running the manual shredder two or three times or perhaps even more. Running it once for most people should suffice, and if you want, run it a second time. Exit out to the main menu for the next step. Step 7 is erasing and resetting your phone to the factory default a second time. We've already done this once, now we're going to do it a second time. From the home screen, we want to click on settings. And then we want to scroll down and look for general. Once we click on general, we want to scroll down to the bottom of general where we will see option for reset. Click on reset. Erase all content and settings is the master erase. We want to click on that. Enter that 
password that we set up at the beginning. It will then remind us that we will be erasing everything. So we click erase iPhone, confirm by clicking erase iPhone a second time, and we go back to the white screen of reset. After your phone resets, you could turn it off because you're done with it. At this point, you want to remove and keep your SIM cards and any micro SD cards. iPhones do not have micro SD cards, but they do have SIM cards which need to be removed. Here is a side of an iPhone 6, and in the red box, you can see this is the SIM card port. This is where the SIM card sits, and we need to remove it. In order to remove it, we could use either a SIM card removal tool or a pin stick it into that hole very carefully it needs to be the right size tool so be careful and the sim card tray should slide out with your sim card in hand if you're afraid you're going to break your phone bring it to your cellular store and have them do that there so now that your phone is properly wiped the sim card is out and the micro sd cards are out my final piece of advice is to avoid getting scammed selling your phone is tricky because if you sell it to somebody you know and it breaks they're going to blame you and they're going to look to you to fix it however if you sell it online there's a chance you're going to get scammed there are services like gazelle.com and usell.com that will buy iphones from you safely and securely However, we could always get a little more money using services like eBay or Craigslist. If you're going to use services like eBay or Craigslist, make sure you're only selling to trusted sellers and make sure that they're marked trusted sellers and that you're shipping to trusted addresses. Well, my name is Adam Scott Want, professor and technologist from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments section below and subscribe for additional tutorials of this type.